Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Amanda. Welcome to The Buzzed Artist, a channel where you can unlock your creativity and just have fun with acrylic paint. Today, we are going to be doing another Halloween painting. I am super excited for this one. We're going to be drawing rickety old churches, rickety old gates, and some pretty stellar looking pumpkins and a pretty deep and menacing looking sky. And before we get started, please be sure to like and to subscribe to my channel so that you can watch some future videos. Now let's do this. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to show you a couple things that we will be using. I will be using three types of brushes. And the types of brushes I'm using, I'm using a wide uh, brush, I'm using a, a medium sized brush, and this one has a bit of a rounded tip to it. And that's kind of what I like using for um, some corners with, that I need more coverage on. And then of course a small paintbrush. I have... And I'll also be using four different types of colors today. I'm going to be using a titanium white, a Mars black, um, a primary red, and primary yellow. So these are only four colors and we will only be using these for our painting. Okay, and I will be including a link in the description below for all the materials that I'm using here today so that you can have them for reference. Okay, so let's get started. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your big brush and you're going to dip it into your paint water. So you're going to get that nice and wet. And then what you're going to do is... Uh, so we want to work on the sky first, and the sky is a myriad of colors. So um, what I would suggest doing is to work with the lighter colors first and then to incorporate the darker ones later. So what we can start doing is actually work on um, the like yellow orangey tinges in the sky. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take a little bit of our yellow and we're going to take some red. We're gonna mix those colors together. Now, I usually like to put a lot more yellow than red because it helps give that very cool, like orangey kind of look. So that's kind of why I'm kind of concentrating on the yellow on this one. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this just so I can mute it out. So you're gonna get this really cool orange color. Now, what I'm going to do next is, um, I'm going to actually start with my moon because then that way I can kind of base my painting around it. So I'm going to probably place my moon um, to the right of my canvas. I'm just going to place it right here. And I'm just going to make a circle. Um, don't be afraid if your circle is not entirely the best circle. You can fix this later. Um, or if you want to use a smaller brush to kind of get you more control, that's fine. But I'm just applying that circle, just making it, it's a basic, you know, your basic uh, run-of-the-mill kind of circle, nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. Okay, so once you kind of have your circle, now you can start. So the sky is basically emanating from this moon, so what we're just going to do is we're going to make circles that start at the moon and then get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, see what I did there? So I'm just taking my brush and I'm just kind of following, making bigger and bigger circles. And I'm just spreading the color. Now, I'm going to be using different types of colors and, and, you know, kind of overlapping and adding more and more and more. So it's okay to just just go crazy right now because you'll be adding more colors later that will really add awesome dimension to your painting. I almost dipped it in my tea. That would have been gross. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. And also don't forget to get the sides of your painting as well. This one took me a while to kind of come up with because at first I had one vision in, in my head about how I wanted to do it and then as I started doing it, it just wasn't coming out the way I wanted it to. And I kept going and going and thinking to myself, oh, why am I not getting what I, what I need from this? 
so there were a lot of times when I kind of had to scrap this and kind of say, screw it, I'm going to do something else. And that's exactly what I did. In fact, I did that um, about two times with this painting until I came to the final one. So we have struggles as well, you guys. Um, I always, always struggle when it comes to painting and it's just a matter of being okay with the fact that, you know, things can change. That's the whole thing about creativity. You know, people who are artists, which means it's, you know, anybody that, that is willing to take a creative adventure, um, people who are artists are the ones that are willing to kind of just figure it out as it comes along. So you never really know how a painting is really gonna go. You get an idea, but you really don't know um, how it's really gonna turn out. But you just trust, you trust the process and kind of just let go. You let go of all the fears, your inhibitions, and all the voices that are telling you you can't do it. Because you can. And the more you listen to that voice and listen to that intuition, the more you can unlock that creativity that you're really after. See, that's what art is, it's freedom. It's just helping, helping you express yourself. I'm just going back and forth, adding in my colors. Actually add a bit more on this side here. Now, I, every time I go and do that orange color again, it always comes out it's slightly bit different and that is totally okay. Um, I do like having a very versatile sky that has a lot of colors kind of um, happening to it. So I am totally okay with it. Okay. So for the most part, my canvas is covered. Um, there are some bits and pieces of, of the actual canvas showing up underneath. Um, I'm not too concerned about covering everything up, but if you want to, you can. Because what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and add another layer of color. And um, what I'm going to jump into now is I'm going to start adding a little bit of black. Um, this is going to add a really cool element to your sky. And honestly, a little bit of black goes a long, long way. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the same brush. I'm not going to clean it. Um, I'm just going to keep it as it is. I'm just going to take a little bit of black, just like so, and we're going to test it out. So every time I do a painting and I'm not entirely sure how it's going to come out or I'm kind of like figuring out like how all the colors are going to mix together, I don't necessarily go full, fully into the black I, or into that color. I just want to kind of test out a small area and if I'm liking what I'm seeing, I just I keep going. So I'm... Fixing that. I'm, I'm adding the black as I go into into like stripes almost. So I'm not completely covering my background, but I have just a little bit to add little patches because you know it, this this scene it takes place at night, so um, I want to make sure that I accurately capture a very dark tone to this. Okay.
I'm slowly adding more and more black as I'm getting comfortable. Um, I don't, I don't want to completely lose the orange, but I do want to add in the darkness here, so I'm just going to keep going. again with like more layers of black now that I've already kind of placed the first layer in and this time the black is going to be it's going to be showing up even more strong than before which is kind of what we were going for starting to see the menacing sky now it's playing into the rest of the scene here I'm gonna go ahead and bring the black ever so close to the moon's outline because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna kind of go back in and add lighter tones into the sky and this is going to create a very like active looking sky there's like a lot going on with it and there's like this almost um, like menacing, engulfing um, kind of atmosphere to it. Okay. Looks like a Tim Burton scene, doesn't it? <laughs> Get in there. is I'm going to go back in and add some um, very, very, very light orange. So once again, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make sure I clean this, and I'm going to take some red, I'm gonna take some yellow. Actually, a lot more yellow than red at this point. Um, so we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna add a lot of white. Basically, I want a very, very, very pale, very pale orange. Okay, so I got it. It looks like almost like skin tone, which is, you know, that's another, that's kind of another look we're going for. Now I'm gonna go back in here and I'm not taking the broad side, but I'm going on the tip of my brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and add in uh, some layers of this color down and I'm gonna do it in stripes so I'm not gonna like um, try to cover my entire canvas but you know there's there's portions of this color that are just running rampant into the sky here which is kind of what we're trying to go for don't need to do too much of that actually um, I'm gonna probably stop right here because then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with the black see now I'm going back and forth pretty much just trying to feel out the scene so I'm not gonna clean my brush I'm just gonna take a little bit of black and I'm just gonna go back in and add like same as like I was doing with the white just like or with that very pale orange like just going in and adding the stripes in this is a very dynamic looking sky. There's a lot going on. And what's gonna be really cool is that because the sky has so much going on with it, it's gonna really have a nice contrast when it's set against the uh, hill we're gonna be 
painting a little later. back and forth. I almost dipped it in my tea again. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back in this time and I'm gonna go and add in like a, a very vibrant orange. Um, I do like a lot going on in the sky here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add more red and we're gonna put a little bit of yellow. Actually, um, If we're gonna do like you know um, racial comparison I'd say like um, you want to do equal parts red and yellow. Red is very like a dominating color, so it's really going to take up a lot. Um, and then what we're going to do is add some white to this. Okay. And you're going to get this like very light version of orange in a way. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do the same thing like I was doing before. I'm kind of going with the tip of my brush and I'm just going to add in bits and pieces of this color. I don't want to do too much, just a little bit. And I'm going with the tip of my brush. Now for those of you who have painted with me before, I'm a big fan of holding my brush like a pencil. So I have the ultimate control with it. And I don't recommend pressing down hard using your brush. I always recommend going very gentle with it. So I'm, I'm kind of holding it right, barely touching the canvas and then kind of just taking little little dabs into the canvas and, and kind of popping right back out again. So I think that's all I want of this, of this pink. And then, uh, let's see, last but not least, I think we're gonna go add some like shades of, of mellow yellow. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take some, we're gonna make sure we clean this brush first. We're gonna take some yellow, and then we're gonna take some white. We're gonna mix them together. Okay. And because your paint is still wet, a lot of these colors are gonna blend very nicely into each other. Okay. So once again, same strokes. I'm just gonna use a little bit here and there. But this time, I want to concentrate it around my moon. So I'm just going to go in along the perimeter and just kind of add in the colors here kind of filling it in because I'm gonna go back in with the orange and touch it up later but I just wanted to establish this and you'll notice with any with anything like that has a, an emanating light source to it it's very strong like the, the yellow is very strong around the moon and then eventually it kind of just like spreads and tapers out so it's not as powerful and not as strong but you'll still see kind of like beams of it okay. you really don't need much I'm, I don't want to make this like really complicated okay so now we're gonna go back in and just kind of retouch up our moon so I'm gonna move down down to another brush size um, I, I do want a little bit of control in this one and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and make that orange color again. This time um, I'm just going to do a very little amount of red and a lot of uh, yellow. And then I'm just going to add some, some white. Just going to get it down. Okay, and yeah, that's good. And I'm just going to go in. Now there is a part in this moon that I thought was really cool, which was um, half of it is kind of uh, got a shadow to it, like it's a light, it's a darker version of this color that we just laid down. So what I'm just going to do is that color we just made, just add a tad bit more red. So you're going to get this really cool, um, like, purple color, oh uh, sorry, wow, my colors are off my orange color, and I'm just going to go in halfway on the moon and just paint half of it in this color. Now because my paint is still wet, this is going to blend 
very nicely. Okay. It's barely noticeable, but it's it's just subtle enough. And that's it. Okay. So I'm gonna let this dry for about five minutes and then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna actually paint our hill. All right, be right back. Okay, drawing dance party over. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to make the hill. So we're gonna go and use our rounded tip brush. This is like the second biggest one you have. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and wet. And I'm gonna take black. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make, I'm just gonna start at the uh, left portion of my canvas, bring my little hump up here. I'm gonna probably like make the hump like this big. That, and I'm gonna bring it down. Just like so. And that's our hill. So what we're gonna do now is just gonna fill in this uh, bottom portion with some black. And I'm gonna do that with my biggest brush because I don't wanna be here all day painting, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and upgrade my black. See how you got the contrast of the hill with the sky? It really stands out. So next I want to show you how to paint that church on top here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean that medium sized brush. We're just going to make the um, kind of a general outline for this. So I'm just going to take my brush and with the tip, um, I'm just going to draw or rather paint two straight lines. Just like so. And then for the roof of our church, so I'm just going to do one brush stroke kind of going up like that. It's got like a little, it comes, comes to a plateau on the top. And then you got another line just like that on the other side. Just like that. And then I'm just going to take the two sides that kind of flare out. I'm going to make a straight line going into the wall, the vertical. and I'm just going to paint the inside. That's pretty much our church.
And I'm gonna show you now how to make the little cross that's on top. I'm just gonna graduate down to my smallest brush. I'm gonna dab it into my black. And I'm just gonna go on to the top where the plateau is. I'm just gonna draw a line going up, vertical line going up. This part's pretty easy actually. Vertical line going up. And then a horizontal line. And that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> so that's the that's the extent of our of our church. Um, and I want to actually show you how to make the little um, the little fence areas that are around the church. So once again, you're going to take your small brush, dip it in your black, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw a we're going to draw a series of lines. So we're going to draw or paint three vertical lines on the right side and four vertical lines on the left side. Basically whatever you can fit on the hill here. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw a horizontal line. Um, so this is going to be our gate. Okay. So those are the gates. And so now you've made your gates. Um, I do want to show you how to add, now that your paint here is a tad bit more dry, that your hill. Um, we're going to go back in with your big brush. And we're going to make a gray color. So I'm just going to take some white, a little bit of black, actually I'm going to do a little bit more black, and I'm going to do some white, Great. basically I just want like a, like a dark charcoal black, a uh, gray rather. Um, so now that I kind of have that color, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create some accents on the hill here. So I'm just going to go and add in this, this kind of gray-ish color um, to our hill. You really don't need that much to be honest, I just this is just like a little bit of an added effect. It kind of adds a bit more of a, like an intense gravity to to your painting. And you can add as much or as little as you want of this kind of grayish color. Um, I just want a little bit to kind of, um, just, I like, I like uh, using this kind of color. It just, I don't know, it just looks a little more creepy to me. Colors look creepy, man. Especially when it's against this backdrop. Okay. And usually what I like to do is I like to go back in with my smaller brush and just add little tones of black here and there. Not too crazy, just like while my paint is still wet. I'm not doing too much, I'm just adding little bits here and there of black. So I'm just taking a little bit on my brush. And because my paint is still wet, this totally works. So I think I'm good on this end here. 
Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, there's some fence, uh, picket fences right around here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I'm gonna use the same brush, my medium size, and I'm gonna dip it in my black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some vertical lines with the broad side of my brush. Now I'm making the lines um, slightly like kind of following the hill so some of them, you know, like the, the vertical line that's the immediate right is always like a tiny bit shorter. It's creating that illusion that this is kind of following the, the perimeter of the hill. So I'm just going to keep adding those vertical lines. And then once I got that, I'm just going to draw or paint a, a line going across. Connecting all these lines together. So that you got a fence. Alright. Now, let's do the jack-o-lantern smile. This is going to be super creepy and super fun. So now we're going to go with our smallest brush and I'm going to dip it into my black. Okay. Now, um, the way I'm going to do this is kind of just like, like a pumpkin. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to do his eyes first. And his eyes kind of have that menacing grin. Um, so I'm just going to do a line going kind of slanting down this way. This way and then connect the two lines together. So that's eye number one. I'm gonna do another slant here. Going down. Connecting. Okay, so just to recap, it's a line, line going down next to it, and then connecting the two. Okay. So it looks like it's got this evil grin. Of course, if you want to do a t another type of uh, pumpkin face, that's totally cool. That's up to you. Um, and then I'm going to do his grin. Now his grin, what makes it so creepy is that it goes like literally from almost ear to ear. So I'm just going to... And I'm going to just uh, create a bigger portion of the smile on the bottom here. So I'm just going to add more of that black to give that illusion that he's smiling really wide. And there you go. So now what we're going to work on is our pumpkins. So I'm going to wait for this hill part to dry and then we're going to go back in and add in those pumpkins. Just noticing I did want to add a bit more black streaks to the sky. So I figured while this was drying I could just go ahead and add those black streaks in. So I'm just going in with my medium brush, dipping it into my black and just finding little areas to go and add the black in. Again, you can do this in stripes um, if you want to add more black because you kind of like that really dark menacing look, go for it.
does add a lot more menacingness to this, so I'm glad I did this. This is dry enough and I'm going to start working on my pumpkin. Pumpkin. So there's this uh, a kind of a pumpkin patch that's kind of congregating. I'm going to turn this around. Um, that's kind of congregating on the sides here. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean my medium sized brush. Okay. And I'm going to make a, um, I'm going to make a, ew, I'm going to throw my brush first and I'm going to make a uh, light orange color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow little bit of red. I'm just gonna mix those two together. Then I'm gonna add some white. We really want to get this color to be light. And maybe a little bit of Okay, so kind of got this um, it's like very pale orange kind of color. Now what I'm going to do is, um, to make these pumpkins, I'm just going to take my brush and just very lightly think about like kind of the brush strokes that these pumpkins would be. Um, each pumpkin has a rind to it, so I'm kind of painting each rind and then just kind of building off on that rind over and over and over again. And it doesn't look like much right now, so that's kind of why it's not a big deal if you don't get it right. Um, but let me let me show you how to do that one more time. So I'm gonna probably do a pumpkin right here. So I'm gonna take my brush, gonna make a curve, then I'm gonna make another brush stroke, and then another brush stroke, and then another brush stroke with the opposite curve. And that's pretty much how you make a pumpkin. <laughs> Um, and I'm gonna make another pumpkin here that's overlapping with this pumpkin. So I'm just gonna make a line on the right, or on the left rather. Another line, another line, and then another line. So I'm really making like a series of lines next to each other over and over and over again. And then I'm gonna do another one here, so. It's not a big deal if um, you're not getting like the per perfect look looking pumpkin. If it's like if it's a little too hard, just think about making circles um, or oblong circles. Um, I much rather prefer doing it this way. Three, four. I kind of like to count the strokes. It kind of helps me um, not get in my head with the pumpkins. Let me do another one right here, so one, two, three, four. And what I always like about my pumpkins anyways is that they're they're you know they got that nice rounded top to them. So I'm gonna make sure it has it. Okay, so we just we, we just made um, the foundation of our pumpkin. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, kind of like a yellowish tint going on the the top portion of it. So we're just gonna take a we're gonna take the exact same color we we're using. We're just gonna add a lot more yellow. And I'm gonna add some more white. I really want to get that yellow tint. And ba I'm, ba I'm putting a butt ton of yellow. Okay, so now that I got that color, I'm just going to go on the top part and just 
add in a couple brush strokes. Um, I'm kind of just feathering the top portions of the pumpkin here. Because later on we're going to be adding black and white to accentuate where the uh, rinds of the pumpkin are. But right now I just want to like add some yellow tones to the top portion only. And I'm just taking my brush and kind of following the shape of the pumpkin and just kind of bringing it down. So I'm taking my brush and going down, following the shape of the pumpkin. Okay, down, following the shape of the pumpkin. Down, following the shape of the pumpkin. That's all you really need for this part, so I'm gonna wash my brush because now we're gonna do the bottom portion and that is a more of a red tint to it. So I'm gonna start in a new little section of the palette. So I'm gonna take some red. I'm gonna take some yellow. You don't need a lot, you're just need a little. You see how much red that is? Um, and then I'm gonna take some white. I'm really gonna dilute it down. So you're gonna get this like almost, uh, I do want to have a little bit less pink, um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. Okay. So that should get me what I'm looking for. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure I don't have globs of it on my brush. I'm just gonna take my brush and we go to the bottom this time and work from the bottom up. So bottom pumpkin up. Follow the shape of the pumpkin from the bottom. And I'm kind of just gonna bring it up to where our yellow kind of ended. This is gonna just be a really cool like blending effect. So I'm just gonna follow the shape of the pumpkin, starting from the bottom, moving up. Okay, so up. Very, I'm, and I'm barely touching my canvas, I'm just very, very lightly feathering this color in. So I'm moving from the bottom. Okay, so those are the basis of our pumpkins. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some <clears throat> black to show where the rinds are. And um, I'm gonna actually do this while these pumpkins are still pretty wet. So I'm gonna take the smallest brush that I have and dip it in my black. And I'm going to go ahead and make the rinds. So I'm gonna start like um, on this side here. I'm just gonna make, make a rind. Um, stroke and basically I'm just going to imagine where like a rind would be and just kind of paint it on okay. um, and I'm not making the black portion go all the way down to the pumpkin bottom um, I actually like the fact that it kind of trickles off um, but then again, that's that's totally up to you how you want to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna just re rinse and repeat. I, I don't want to make like these big broad strokes 
that show my rind. Um, I just want to kind of very gently let the color flow and, and I can kind of play around with it. Because your paint is still wet for the pumpkins, the black is going to fit blend very nicely. Okay. how some of your rinds came out um, you can always go back in with those colors you made before like your um, very light yellow or your kind of deeper red and just kind of go back in and add in the colors again so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go kind of back in and add in the colors so you can go back and forth on this you can kind of like feel it out and if you're not really feeling like a certain color is really doing it for you or you're kind of like you know Oh, like I, I made too much of this one. Don't fret. You can always go back in later and fix that. That's the thing about acrylic paint is that it, it is it is forgiving. It, once you kind of get over the fact that you, you will make mistakes, um, once you kind of get to that point where you you know you're you need to be okay with the fact you're going to be making mistakes it happens that's life anything you do there's always going to be um something that doesn't go the way you want it to and what's so beautiful about painting is that you have resources right in front of you that can get you right back where you want it to be that resources your painting, your imagination. You know, and I see so many people punishing themselves, you know, telling me, telling me that, oh, my painting sucks, this sucks, I hate it. I mean, what you're really telling me is, you know, you hate yourself and you <laughs> really don't like what, you know, what your imagination is telling you. And that's, that's completely not it, you know? Um, painting is just, it's just kind of figuring out yourself you're not you're not looking to be a professional and if you are that's cool but um, you know it, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys are just here just wanting to um, you know just figure out a way to unlock that creativity you always love to paint um, but either you're afraid to do it because it looks so hard um, or you know you never really thought you could be into it but really the secret when it comes to painting is that it is such a freeing activity and you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to be this blooming artist. And if you are, that's cool. If not, that's also fine. I mean, I think we, we come into the studio and we are so incredibly hypercritical of ourselves that it just completely takes all the fun out of discovering and learning. I mean, what we're trying to do here is just kind of become little kids again and just, you know, have fun with our paint. Back in kindergarten, I'm sure, you know, a lot of you guys were just huge into, into painting and, and just playing around with the paint colors. And you never thought to yourself, this sucks. Um, mine doesn't look like Timmy's next to me. Um, or, you know, I'm never going to paint again. How do I even know how to pick up a paintbrush and do this stuff? You just, you just kind of did it. You just kind of took your brush and played. And that is what we're trying to do again. We want to, we want to take away the stigma that painting is so unapproachable and that it, it can't be a fun activity. And it's something that anyone can do, especially when you're stressed out or you just need some time to kind of kick back and relax. Because this is you time. This is not time for you to be perfect. This is the time for you to just explore and have fun with your paint. That's all you want to do. OK. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go back in and add a little bit more of the rinds. I really do like experimenting with um, the different color choices for, for our pumpkins. we're gonna just add some finishing touches so I'm gonna take my my small brush I'm gonna get it nice and clean and I'm gonna dip it into my white now white is one of those colors that really helps to make a lot of these scenes come alive so what I'm gonna do is with the white first I'm going to make a little stem for my pumpkin so I'm just gonna add kind of a little bit of white is I'm just going to make a little little bit of white on the tops of the pumpkins because um, what I'm thinking about here is the moon is glistening and it's hitting the tops of the pumpkin so the pumpkin is gonna have this very like cool reflective um, feature about it so I'm just gonna go ahead and very gently actually just adding in the white and making sure not to press down too hard I'm, I'm literally just very lightly adding in the white. And you can add as much as as little as you'd like. Um, I do like how the white is such a like it really pulls all the colors together and really like kind of makes it nice and clean, which is what I'm a big fan of. Um, so next, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to the fence here and I'm gonna add white accents again to reflect like what the moon is kind of doing with, with its like light power. So I'm just gonna add a bit of white on the side here and like a little bit of white on the top here to represent the top of the post. And a little bit of white here and then a little bit of white here, just like that. Okay. And I'm just going to repeat that over and over again. So I'm going to add a little bit of white here, a little bit of white on the top. does separate your um, gate from like the hill and everything which I think is really cool and neat. Right. Now next we're gonna do the same thing for the, for the little picket fence that's on the top of the church here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint to the right of the black line I don't want to cover the black line I just want to do a little bit of white Next to the lines. Same here. Okay. And then the side of the church also has a reflection to it, so I'm going to make a line on the side of the wall of the church here. And then I'm going to do another line 
at the rooftop church, just like so, following that, as well as the cross, so I'm going to do one outline to the right of the cross and just lift it, just like so. Pretty spooky. Right on. So, every once in a while I'll kind of go back in and be like, oh, I could use a little more of this and that. Um, so in my sky, last but not least, I'm going to add some of that white as well. Um, so I'm just going to add little tones of white. Um, this really kind of gives that illusion that there's something mysterious out there. There's something bigger, um, like mist or ghosts or whatever. Um, so <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and add those like little stripes of white. You can do as much or as little as you'd like. I actually like to put on... I'm a big fan of white. Um, I think it's such a, like I said before, it's a clean look. It kind of gives you a lot of like stability with your eye. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw those in. Okay. And that's it. I hope you had a wonderful time spending time with me and painting this haunted scene. So once again, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. And if you have any ideas or suggestions on what kind of paintings you'd like for me to do next, please be sure to comment or message me privately and I will get to it. All right, once again, this is Amanda and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.